So my presentation, it's really about cell phone photography because that's the tool you usually have available to you. Um, a tiny bit of background, I work in a camera store. So I sell cameras and I also print pictures. I print cell phone pictures. So I see kind of what goes wrong with them a lot. But my main point, every camera ever has sucked in some way. Every camera has limitations. Every photo that has ever been taken is a compromise of some sort. So photography also isn't really just an art anymore. It's a practical thing. If you're taking a picture with your cell phone, it's not usually because you're feeling stirred by like the creative passion. It's because you have a picture. You need to take a picture of something. You need it for your website. You need it for your Instagram. You need it for your mom so she knows where you are and knows what's going on because she's going to want to see it. So the best camera you ha is the best camera. People come in all the time and say, you know, I need to buy a camera. What's the best camera? The best camera is the one you have with you and can use know how to use and are going to actually get out of your pocket and use. If you have a giant SLR rig that's sitting in your bag like mine is, it's not doing you any good. So, addressing the limitations of cameras, most of these, I have to admit, I'm sort of cheating, these are just pictures that I've taken. None of them are with cell phone cameras. Most of what you can, like there's things you can do with cell phone cameras. There's limitations, just like with everything. The first limitation is light. Cell phone cameras really suck in low light, but every camera does. So what you want to do is maximize the light you have available to you. Sometimes they have flashes, they're not going to reach very far. Get closer to the thing you're taking a picture of, move it next to the window, do what you can. Um, the second thing is motion. See that? I'm using someone else's flash went off. I took a picture. It was lucky. But you have to be aware of things like that. Try to take advantage of it when it happens. Um, I tend to have this obsession with, pho with photographing things that are in horrible light. So my entire life as a photographer has been dedicated to making the best of a really crappy situation. This is the, the golf dome in Henrietta. It's awful. Sometimes you get good light. Take a picture. Um, you don't. You want to avoid backlit subjects usually. You need some fill light. So that's what a flash can be for or just move, reposition your subject. Your next enemy is motion. A little motion blur can be really cool in a picture. Like there's some motion blur. That's neat. They're moving. You can tell they're moving. Cool. But the problem is, if, you're, if you have camera shake, then it, it wrecks the picture. It doesn't look like anything. A little camera shake's okay. You can see I wasn't holding it totally steady. But if it's too shaky, you've ruined the picture. So what you need to focus on is controlling your motion. Brace your arm, use the camera's self timer. Um, or it's, like, uh, what I've found is hitting the button always moves the camera and wrecks the picture. So you gotta try, like this one, there's a bunch of camera shakes, but there's a lot more motion blur. It's more interesting that way. Um, those things are on fire. That girl was crazy. <laughs> I also was probably drunk. Um, but sometimes the motion blur, I'm moving the camera with the moving subject. So she's clear and nothing else is. So you can try things like that. You also, like if you brace your finger just above the touch screen on your cell phone, sometimes you can get it to go off without shaking it. But the self-timer is the coolest thing. And the other thing is to control your distance. Try to frame the picture in a more pleasing fashion. Because most cell phone cameras, the other thing they suck at is zoom. No matter where you are, you're either too far away or so close the darn thing won't focus. So pay attention to your focus. This one actually was using a remote flash. You can't really see because there's a thing. Anyway, um, you can't do that with cell phones, but you can do that effect with another light. So you can try things like that. You can get creative if you want, but you're probably not doing this for art. You're probably doing it for practical purposes. But try changing your angle, getting low, get closer to the thing, whatever you're taking a picture of. Get, like if it's a kid, get down on their level. Try to get a picture like that so that you can get everything you want in the picture, but not have it so far away you can't tell what's going on. Um, so anyway, most of the really fancy aspects of art photography aren't available in most cameras. Like you get a little point and shoot, but it's easy to use. And if you use it a bunch, you can get the hang of using it and get better results. So just because you can't do really fancy stuff with remote flashes or super fast shutter speeds or super high ISOs, doesn't mean you can't take a meaningful photo. And again, my point that I was starting with to, if you have a flow, you could get, I got a lot of gravel on my knees with this shot. Um, the point is that you can still get a photo that is useful for your purposes, and occasionally you can make some sort of accidental art too. So, anyway, this is the end. <laughs> I work the Delaware camera, they're on Delaware Avenue. If you need a camera, come see us. <laughs>